All right, what is going on guys? It's Travis with Blue Bear Junk Removal. I'm gonna tell you everything I learned my first year in business. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna help you guys out a ton. And guys, full disclosure, this is just things that I have personally learned because right now I'm still on the journey of being a small business owner. It's a small setup. I'm not doing crazy numbers. However, I really do believe you guys will get some value and relate or maybe even disagree, but nevertheless, listen to it. All right, so I'm going to do this video in categories. And the first category is pricing. Everything I learned about pricing. Number one, being cheap is stupid. Who would have guessed? I was the cheapest. I did not see the value in the service. My setup was cheap. I thought it would be really hard to get what I wanted for it. And that was a limiting mindset. Do not be the cheapest in junk removal. It is stupid. You won't make money to help with expenses. You will not be able to save. I was charging $350 per load for a 12-foot trailer. I know it's a no-brainer, but it is not profitable to be cheap. So do not be cheap charge accordingly literally you can look at what junk king charges online just copy them dude just literally copy them or go a little bit cheaper or higher literally do not be cheap another thing about being cheap and pricing is your cheap customers are the shitty customers you don't want to deal with them they're going to be the annoying property managers guys i used to be a property manager yeah we were cheap we were assholes we had a job to do you don't want to deal with cheap people. Your people that do not care about the price, you want to deal with them, dude. Like, why are you dealing with cheap customers? So don't be cheap. It's just, it's going to help you in the long run. Do you want your repeats to be annoying? No, you want them to be chill. So don't be cheap. All right, the last thing about pricing that I learned is the curve. So what do I mean by the curve? The curve of your pricing. It shouldn't be linear, obviously, um, but it has to be an extremely hard curve so the smaller the load, the more expensive per cubic yard. Your cheapest price will be your full load. That'll be the best price. Um, but I'm telling you guys right now, I curved my stuff, but it wasn't hard enough. So you're missing out on profit and you're not going to be making as much if you get a couple small jobs. Um, if you get a couple small jobs and you fill the trailer, it should be way up here. But anyways, guys, a one-fourth load should be about 40% of your full load price. So you need to curve like that. Um, all right, second category is appearance is everything. Um, so obviously you guys wanna look professional because customer perception matters. It's what's gonna set you apart, and help you charge more. Um, see, obviously we have the polo. Looking professional is important. It'll help you charge the right amount of money and it'll help you get more leads. It'll help you qualify the leads so even your pictures should be professional i still post on craigslist but my pictures and my equipment and my uniform and my employee we look professional so that will help lead out cheap customers who are price shopping because a lot of people do value a legit company and obviously we're cheaper than the big guys but they value they don't want some random guy with a trailer right they do value it you can weed out the cheap people by having professional pictures. You can qualify leads by looking professional and charge more. It's important. Okay, sorry. Anyways, on top of looking important, having a second person can help you look even more professional. And this is my third point, which is two is better than one. Hire an employee or helper, even if it's under the table. Literally, guys, I know a lot of you guys do it by yourself, but if you get one amazing employee like I have, Oh my gosh, game changer, dude. You can, they're going to help you with sales if they're better than sales. You can train them. They can do jobs for you. You're going to finish jobs twice as fast. It's going to be more fun because they're going to be cool. Obviously, you have to really like call and hire a good employee like I did. But yeah, it'll just help you get jobs done faster. People are less likely to budge on price when you have two people. It, it just goes a lot smoother. I would recommend it. Seriously, even if you have to raise prices a little bit, I'm, I'm telling you it's worth it. All right, point number four is yard signs. Yard signs are awesome, guys. They're literally awesome. They have the best return for me personally. They're super cheap in comparison to the amount of money you make. 
get yard signs. Order 25, go put them out, see what happens. Put them in good spots. So I recommend at stop signs that are busy, traffic lights where people will stop, off ramps where people will stop and see it. Um, but yeah, be careful because people can take them up. You can get called. So just order a little bit at first, see if you get called. And then if it works, fucking order 100. That's what I did. And they work great. All right, guys. Another thing I learned is sales and how to talk to to people all right guys this one can be kind of hard to explain and it really needs its own video but i'm just gonna give you everything i've learned so far and by no means am i an expert at sales or anything like that um so first of all you really really want to build rapport and talk to them like a person and just be so overly professional and nice to them um and just just really talk to them build rapport if they say they're getting rid of a couch say great we can take care of that for you you cleaning out the man cave just something along th those lines i don't know if that was the best example but just build rapport make them laugh and have a smile on your face and guys the pitch is super important it was on one of the last pictures guys really dial down on the pitch it helps a lot um you just want to present the price and how you charge to them and just have a lot of confidence when you say it and then also when you finally get in person again just continue to be professional and in my opinion when you have two people it does help for sure um, and just explain them the price definitely have a pricing sheet in my opinion but yeah guys um for now that's all i have on advice I really recommend checking out Andrew Thompson. He has a great video about his entire sales pitch. Um, and yeah, guys, just check him out and you'll learn through repetition. All right, I also learned about business legalities. Yeah. So this was the most annoying thing, um, but I learned, guys, you gotta be registered with the state, with the county, and the city you're in and possibly every city you serve. And I'm still figuring out certain things, but I'm legal for the most part. I learned that looking online, you might not get the answers. However, if you go to the city website, usually that's the best place to find help. I'll give you an example of my local city. They give you kind of a step-by-step -step guide how to do it. And guys, honestly, just calling and waiting to get an answer from the county or the city you live in is kind of worth it. It's pretty much free advice, but you just have to wait a while for them to pick up the phones. Some cities and states are easier than others. Mine is a little bit mixed, and I serve a lot of different cities, so I do communicate with them, guys. And on top of learning about the legalities on the federal and state levels, I also learned about it on the insurance level. Levels. So yes, guys, there is limited liability insurance, um, which you do want to get that. Again, I'm not I'm not an expert, but I know you want to have it, right? And then on top of that, you do eventually want to get commercial auto, and commercial auto can be really expensive. We do not have it yet, but if you have any kind of commercial vehicle, um, that's not a truck and trailer if it's a box truck you absolutely have to have it um with the truck and trailer you can get away with personal but guys um commercial auto is expensive and that's one thing i learned and yeah for the most part guys you got to do your research look online call the state i'll put up the images of my stuff to help you and yeah guys that's it for legalities all right, guys, this next one I'm going to tell you about is honestly the most important thing in business and in life that I have learned this past year, and that is discipline and consistency, guys. I know you've heard it before, but you're not going... You're just a bitch. You're honest. Guys, I literally had to stop and redo the recording because I got a call thanks to my discipline of putting out yard signs even though I didn't want to last night. So guys, consistency and discipline is key. You need to be consistent in your marketing and honestly, everything you do, you have to push every day. So on the slow days when you don't get jobs, push, go put out signs, go post on Craigslist every single day, reach out to customers, get better at ads every single day. Guys, you really have to be committed. And don't get me wrong, I'm young. I literally had to learn this. I, For whatever reason, I just didn't get it before. Um, but yeah, you need to be consistent and then you also need to be disciplined. So that means even though you don't want to do it, you got to do it. 
and you should do it like you love it. That's what Mike Tyson says. And look, he's one of the greats. If you want to be great, you got to do it when you don't want to. And I get it's hard. I get you don't want to. But guys, you have to be consistent and you will be rewarded. I'm telling you, if you go put out yard signs right now for three weeks straight, And post on Craigslist every single day. And if you have extra money, dabble in Facebook ads and Google ads and just test things out. You're going to get busy, guys. That's what I started doing. I'm finally getting leads, even though I'm not playing with paid for ads necessarily. But guys, that is what it takes to succeed. And yeah, I don't know why. I literally didn't understand this until last year because I was just maybe a little immature but guys this is in my opinion this is one of the best takeaways i've learned in my young adult years thanks to the business and just life experience i've had so yeah you need to be consistency and discipline i can't stress that enough all right guys the last point of discipline and this might sound counterintuitive but you need to have a balanced life guys you don't need to do 80 to 100 hours for years straight you guys just need to be highly productive with the full work days that you have and then once it's over really try to focus on your family or your kids if you have kids or god and god if god is important to you what i'm saying is we can all learn from david goggins but you probably don't want to be exactly like him even though he's pretty cool but other than that guys that's the last little tidbit i learned from this year um like comment subscribe and i'm going to leave you with this motivational tiktok so after you watch this go out and hustle or love your family or whatever all right peace I don't believe in talent. I'm here because I worked hard my whole life. Without that work, no one in this room would know who I am except my family. So to all the kids around the world watching, paying attention, and aspiring to be like one of us or even on the stage someday, put the work in and watch the magical ride you go on. People have talent. People have a lot of talent. This is going beyond your talent. When talent, when there's no more talent, most people quit. People only go to their talent level. And once your talent level is gone, it becomes a mental game. That the whole mental game sets in then. And most people can only perform to their talent. And they realize, man, why am I always messing up right here? It's because you're performing to your talent. And then after that, your mind has nothing for you. Nothing's ever-